Namaskar, Vanakam, Sastrikal, and welcome back to Grow with the Jan family. I'm Anjali. And today we're going to be reacting to a little bit more news. So we did, like a week ago, I want to say, yeah. the UN ambassador's response after the closed door meeting with China and Pakistan and India. And so Syed Akibardin did an amazing job defending India and defending these, you know, articles and what was going on in Jammu Kashmir, like just well said. And he took three Pakistani reporters first to answer their questions and basically said like, you know, nothing, we're, we're dealing with the situation. Nobody has gotten hurt. It's, you know, give us some time to work through it. And if Pakistan wants to talk, let's talk. No terrors, let's talk. Yeah. So because we did that, we got such a great response from it and people wanted some more stuff. So today my husband has been finding some new um, different clips that have come out, some more from the UN and um, some from other things that just, you know, kind of goes along with that theme and really just should make you proud of India like we are. Because yeah. India is our home away from home. So if you're new to our channel, uh, my husband comes from India. So... Anjali is half Indian, and um, so the U.S. is our home, it's our country, it's where it feeds us, it's where we live, and we love it. Um, India is our home away from home. So our heart is in two places, and um, and we like to share that experience with you, and you guys have been sharing your experiences with us, so we've enjoyed this. So. This is, um, this first clip is from the UN meet and it's the US and the UK um, slamming Pakistan and China for persecuting minorities. And uh, so we're gonna watch that one first and react to it. Yes. United Kingdom has spoken up for the rights of religious communities and minorities across the world. From the Uyghurs in China, Christians and Amdis in Pakistan, as we heard from the V. Pakistan, religious minorities continue to suffer from persecution, either at the hands of non-state actors or through discriminatory laws and practices. We appreciate Poland inviting Naveed Walter to speak today about the challenges to religious freedom in Pakistan. He's been a courageous advocate for the persecuted, whether Christian, Ahmadi, Hindu, or others. We remain deeply concerned about the Chinese government's escalating widespread and undue restrictions on religious freedom in China. And we urge the Chinese government to respect the human rights and fundamental freedoms of everyone in that nation. Many members of religious groups in China, including ethnic Uyghurs, Kazakhs, and other Muslims, Tibetan Buddhists, Catholics, Protestants, and Falun Gong, face severe persecution and repression. And we call on the Chinese government to end its war on faith and to respect religious freedom for all. I respectfully urge all countries, including those in Muslim majority countries, to join our calls for better treatment of Muslims and others in China. Yes, so that was definitely well said by the U.S. Yeah. and the U.K. I think, you know, India has always said we welcome you with open arms. And I you feel like, us with open arms. yeah, that's always, and peace is always the answer. We love Gandhi and his message, you know, spread across the world. And, and you know, not just in India, but people really took his, his message to heart and, and used it everywhere. Yeah. And it's just, it's so nice, you know, India... And the U.S., you know, the democracy, the, the freedom, 
of speech, the freedom of religion, like that's just how it should be. You should be able to practice your faith. You should be able to look different and be different and not be discriminated against and not be attacked because of it. I mean, it really should be open arms policy everywhere. You know, everybody at the end of the day is human. And, you know, don't go yelling at somebody else's backyard if they're not doing human right things, if they're not doing stuff the right way, when nobody's gotten hurt and they're trying to do it peacefully, don't bang on someone else's door if your door, back door, is full of people not being nice. Like, work on that first. Work on being yeah. nice to others and, you know, everybody's human. Treat everybody nicely. And I think that's one way that makes India so great is the diversity, you know, welcoming people of different faiths, of different, yeah. from everywhere. Different and, religions. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really how it should be. So um, it should really kind of, it's just funny how it comes in right after the other speech, you know. Yeah. They were going, banging, like, this is not right. You know, they're they're doing stuff that's inhumane. And right after that, now they're getting slammed by the UN about not being nice to their own people or people that are living in their own countries. So, so you know, after watching that and seeing a little bit, you know, China and Pakistan kind of getting the yes. finger pointed back at them after this last week, you know, when uh, they were trying to point the finger at India, um, you know, this week in the news, there's been some stuff with the U.S. and China, and um, we had uh, another thing we're going to show you and react to was from a highly successful industrialist who um, also represents, and it's from both, like, the, the Democratic and the Republican side, so pretty much this is how the U.S. believes, um, and so let's start that out. Yeah. Well, I, I think when you talk about terrorists versus India and terrorists versus China, two separate issues, maybe sure. the same underlying uh, impetus. On China, China's been a great partner for the U.S. I, I originally bet on China in 1995. Uh, I've been there for 30 years, uh, and it was a win-win mentality. The last 10 years has developed into win-lose. Our trade deficit between them has gone from $100 billion 15 years ago to $400 billion today. Uh, different rules apply to American companies in China versus Chinese companies here. There's an unacceptable level of industrial espionage, yeah. and that has to be dealt with. So even though I'm a huge believer in China and U.S. relations, I think what is occurring in terms of holding China accountable is a must. The tariffs is just one of the issues. India is an entirely different phenomena. India is the most important strategic partner to the U.S. and the world, and the India also views themselves as the U.S. most strategic partner. When I started saying that four years ago when I became chair of the U.S.-India Strategic Partnership Forum, people didn't get it. Mm -hmm. But today, if you were in this room and you would listen to literally uh, Secretary of Energy, uh, uh, Rick Perry talk about it, or Secretary of Commerce, Wilbur Ross, or Speaker Pelosi uh, at lunch. She was just amazing. And then we'll hear it from Jared Kushner later today. You've got the top American government leaders saying this is a country we want to have a partnership with. The tariff issue with them is more transactional. We'll work through that. That's what a partnership is about. And you see the same thing from Prime Minister Modi, who is amazing in India, and all of his cabinet, yes, who we yes. meet with regularly. Yeah. So fast forward for your investors listening. If you're betting on one country outside the U.S. for GDP growth over the next decade, double down on India. Modi had just won there in a big time. If you're looking for new IPOs, they're going to be coming out of India. And a lot of the India diaspora in the U.S. are forming companies as well. And if our two countries could work together, not just on trade, yeah. and it's growing at 7% per year, and it's more equal than most of the other countries are, and we can improve it, and I agree with that, uh, you're suddenly looking at an ability to invest in startups in the U.S. from the India diaspora as well. So I think they're entirely different scenarios. The trade issue is just a common bond. It's, it's, it's interesting, John, um, that you should describe India as our most important strategic partner in the world. I, I really want to linger on that thought yes. for what it says about yes. where, where India is today and how far it's come. 
when we were last together a couple of years ago, you were talking about how India is the, not sleeping giant, but really the Goliath of South Asia. Is the playing field yes. on trade between India and the United States level? And if not, how does it need to be level yeah. so it's more equitable? So in the sequence you just raised it, uh, India has been the sleeping giant, a slow follower. Now it's becoming the fast leader. The economic growth over the last five years has been the strongest in the world. Modi got reelected in a landslide. He's very pro-U.S. India working together. There needs to be changes and a little bit more balancing on the playing field. But different than China, the Indians understand we've got to find a way for this to be a win-win. And it isn't a single transactional issue. In India, we have huge alliances on defense, huge alliances in terms of innovation, job creations. Our companies are working remarkably well together. There is no industrial espionage issue, patent protection, et cetera. Does it need to be balanced a little bit more? Yes, I do. I believe it does. And even good friends are going to have disagreements. I'd look for this one to be settled fairly shortly. Prime Minister Modi and President Trump actually get along very well. President Trump uh, said in the G20, he said, we are great friends. And by the way, the relationship between our countries has never been better. That's the atmosphere you see inside the room there. That's one of the few things, interestingly enough, that Democrats and Republicans actually agree upon, the importance of India and the U.S. becoming partners, and now so some people realizing perhaps the most important relationship let, in the let world. Let me probe the, the, much lately. They agree on India, so yeah. that's great. So he had a lot of good things to say about India yeah. and how India is like the next big thing, which is awesome. You know, he yes. talks about the economy and how they're like, you know, in the last five years, they've just come up from, you know, and they're doing amazing. And so it's really great. We heard uh, Amazon just opened one of the largest uh, sites in India. So, you know, it's really exciting to see all the good things starting to come out of India and all yeah. the pr progress, I would call it. Like, you know, it's such a great country. And yes, let's partner up with India as the U.S. because, you know, we have a lot more in common than we do with China. You yeah. Know, both democracies were both you know freedom of religion freedom of speech it just seems like our countries are very similar and hopefully things will work out and and they can work together a lot more you know that would be great i think for both yeah. countries you and know? i feel like since we're both like big um big countries if we work um you know together we can accomplish more than we could imagine so Right. Like, I mean, India has a big space program, and s space program, and so do we. So I feel like if we combine them. Yeah, working together and collaborating. Yeah. And especially with common interests and common goals, like, you know, that, and it, they're the next big thing, which is awesome. That just makes me happy yeah. to hear. You know, we, we did some other things about, you know, some of the history of India and, and the British rule and, you know, how much stuff got taken away and, and just, you know, India should have already been here a long time ago. Yes. And so it's nice to see that things are going well for them in the country. And Modi's doing a great job, Prime Minister Modi. And, um, you know, and hopefully they will work together. You know, we find that when India and the U.S. come together, great things happen. Right, Anjali? Yeah. A little, a little biased. If you guys don't already know, we're a mixed family. My husband comes from India. And... Um, yeah, we think that when you mix India and the U.S., you get the best results, right? Here, Anjali and Jane and Noah, they, I think, have the best features from both worlds. And now that we're doing a lot more stuff on India, we're learning a lot more. We are bringing both cultures to them in religion, and it's just amazing. So I hope this makes you feel proud of India and, yes, and where it's come. Yeah. And uh, we have one more little clip. It's a tweet from the president. He tweets a lot. But this one actually, I think, will help India's, you know, seal the deal with the U.S. a little bit more. So let's watch that. All right. So 
I think this is only going to help India and the U.S., hopefully, yes. in the end. I hope this just becomes, you know, China's seems like they're trying to play hardball, and our president is really good at that, so he's going to play back. And maybe this will just be a good thing in the end for India and the U.S. to come together and become really great partners. Yeah. Um, you know, good things come from it, right? Yeah. So hopefully good things will come from this, and it will just make things better for everyone. So yes. we hope so anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let yes. us know if you want more. And if you like this video, these videos, don't forget to click that like button down below because the more you like, the more YouTube shares our videos. Yes, and don't forget to subscribe and join our wonderful U.S. India family. Bye. Bye.